Hello and welcome to Woolen Hearted. This is a podcast about knitting, spinning, natural dyeing and toy making. My name is Fran and I'm filming this in my home in the Haute Pyrenees which is in the southwest of France where I live with my husband and our two children, a little boy who's nearly five and a baby girl who will soon be one. I hope that you're well and that you've had a good week wherever you are in the world and whatever your world looks like right now. Um, it's been quite cold here since I last recorded and uh, we've had to get out the woolens again and uh, we've been lighting fires in the evening which has been quite strange because a few weeks ago we were really sweltering and enjoying sitting out in the garden and getting getting quite hot while we had our lunch so <clears throat> It's um, the colder weather I think has really prompted me to uh, pick up my knitting again which has been really pleasant and I've got lots of things to show you. So um, starting with my knitting I've been working on my blanket. Um, I've finished one side um, since last week. So I knitted six squares I think. So I've completed this side for the time being and I've just started on this new row at the top. Let's put it the right way around. There we go. Um, so I'm intending to knit the nine squares along this top edge and then I'm going to carefully pack um, the blanket and the balls of wool away so they don't get scoffed by moths um, and I think I'll pick it up again in the autumn. Um, I'm really enjoying working on it still and it's been really pleasant to pick it up again because truth be told since um, all of this that's been going on in the world began I've found it quite difficult to knit. Um, I've just not really been able to concentrate very well and I didn't really fancy um, picking up this project which is strange because I've found it really soothing this week um, so it was good to have filmed a podcast last week as it made me motivated to get back to this project and I really want to thank everyone um, who joined me last week for last week's podcast um, I was feeling quite nervous about filming it I think just because I'd been a bit of a break and so it's really encouraging to have such a warm reception and such far, um, such kind feedback so thank you very much um, for joining me. So yeah as I said this project has been um, really soothing to work on and it's been really inspiring me as well in other parts of my crafting. Um, I think I shared last time that I'm knitting it from various two-ply fingering weight yarns that come from France and England and um, I'm really really enjoying knitting with this very lightly spun uh, woolen spun very delicate very fine wool at the moment and I just would really like some more of it in my life <laughs> so I've been experimenting with that Lourdes fleece that I talked about last time um, with my spinning and have been working on my own two-ply uh, woolen spun fingering weight. So I think last time I recorded I had done a first sample which ended up actually being um, more of a sport weight. It was a little bit too thick to knit. Um, on the finer needles but since then I've spun one 25 gram skein of yarn. I had just done a little sample I think last time we spoke so this I finished over the weekend and for I think actually it's 22 grams for 22 grams I've ended up with almost 100 yards which is amazing because really 25 grams is so so insignificant um, yardage. So it's been in the bath, so it's all nice and balanced now and I'm really really pleased with how this has turned out. It's sort of comparable to 
this commercial yarn um, that I'm basing it on and it's probably the first time I've really managed to recreate exactly a yarn in this way. Um, this project reminds me that six years ago in the autumn of 2014 when I had been spinning for six months my dear friend Melody um, of Mandarins organised her first um, Shetland Wool Week knit along so at the time they had brought out the Schwuck hat which was a colour work um, <clears throat> A colour work hat and um, she Melody announced in the August I think that she was going to um, run this knit along and I'd never participated in a knit along before. Um, I was quite new to the fibre world on, on blogs at the time. Um, I know Instagram was around but I wasn't yet on Instagram and I got really excited and thought oh yeah I want to, to join in and I decided to make to spin my own yarn um and i worked over the summer i was processing the fleeces in august and it was really hot and i just remember struggling with the wheel um because it was on my first spinning wheel which was an antique french wheel and um when i had spun this so i i'd worked out that i needed to five different colors and that they were going to be 25 grams each because that was what the pattern said and um so i had whites and then dark brown natural dark brown and then i was going to naturally dye with um different browns with ferns and um walnut leaves and things like that and uh <laughs> when i came to cast on I realised that uh, I think essentially I had spun like a worsted weight um, two ply. It was so thick and it was odd because my very first yarns were quite fine as is often the way with hand spun yarn. Um, anyway, so somehow I sort of fudged, well I sort of um, adapted the pattern. I think I ended up knitting the children's size on bigger needles and obviously on this bigger yarn. And also I had worsted spun without realising um, because I, I, I had done a swatch. Um, I had spun some yarns as um, woolen spun and then some as worsted spun and I decided that the worsted spun looked better. Of course now I know that Shetland Feral knitting uses woolen spun yarns because it blooms beautifully after but you know I was new to colour work, I was new to spinning, I was new to knit alongs. Um, basically everything that could have gone wrong uh, went wrong with this project and yet I still ended up with beautiful hat that I'm so proud of um, to this day. I don't really wear it because it, <laughs> it's a little bit tight um, but I keep it as a sort of uh, a trophy of um, that very first um, sheep to finished skein and then finished project and um, yeah because the fleeces I I gathered that August so they were like freshly shorn I'd been to a sheep festival um, in our valley that was put on for the tourists and I'd asked the shearer when they were doing demonstrations if I could could um, could gather the fleeces after so all of which is to say I was reminded of this project um, when I was spinning the other day and it's sort of really encouraging for me as a spinner that six years on I can now I understand wool and yarn well enough now because at the time to be honest I didn't really know what fingering weight meant um although I've been knitting since I was a child um I feel like I and I've been knitting full time pretty much since I was a child I feel like it's only been in the last six years um since I became a spinner that I really understand wool now and how yarn is constructed and um, what I like as well. And so it's really encouraging for me to now know that I can more or less design a yarn and spin it, um, even from raw fleece. Um, so I, when this one came off the wheel, I was really excited with how it turned out and although I love it in its um, raw white sheepiness, which is the colour of the Lourdes fleece, I'm feeling really inspired to bring some colour to it. Um, I just all of a sudden have this hankering for colour. I think it's because all around us in the fields and in the gardens around, everything is so green at the moment and there's 
yellow flowers and blue flowers and irises and blossoms and just seeing this colour um, of, of, of new spring all around me even just from my window as I'm looking out into the neighbour's garden it's it's really inspiring me and I'm finding a lot of inspiration in my blanket project um, I'm really hankering for blues and greens and of course lovely yellows so I'm sort of wondering whether I'd like to try and uh, with this spinning project over the coming months spin up as much yarn as I can um, of this fingering two ply weight in little 25 gram um, skeins and then naturally dye them and as I'm hankering for blues and for greens that's going to mean that I'm going to need to do an indigo vat which I'm sort of in two minds about I'm both really excited at the prospect and quite nervous because I've done one indigo vat once before um also six no five years ago um when I went for a week of um it's kind of like wool school so I was learning uh, although I knew how to spin already um, but there was spinning, felting, natural dyeing and just general uh, sorting and skirting of fleeces and things and washing. So under the supervision of the teacher um, Isabel we learnt how to make a traditional fermentation indigo vat and I have indigo, I have henna, I have the lime, I have all the ingredients um, but I've not yet done one myself. So um, I think what I will probably do is I'll begin with dyeing some yarns yellow because if I were to do an indigo vat, I would do some blues, but also greens and you over dye the yellow in the blue. So I can begin um, at the moment with, um, with the yellows and then see what happens see whether i can when the weather's sort of stable and, and warm then i could maybe think about getting um a vat underway and talking of yellows and of naturally dyed yellows um i've got some of my own naturally dyed yarn on my needles at the moment so this is um this is the yellow it's coming out a little bit lighter than it actually is. It's dyed with weld and this is some yarn I dyed um, a couple of years ago and so this is the the intensity, it's a shame you can't quite see, um, this is the intensity of the yellow that I would want for, um, I think that when you do weld over dyed with indigo it's all wode, it's called robin green um, and I think it was a, a colour that was traditionally um, dyed in England at least um, so uh, yes this would this would have been dyed I think it was a hundred gram 100 gram skein so I dyed it with 100 percent so 100 grams of weld to get this really bright yellow uh, and it's a little bit too bright for my liking but my son loves it and I've paired it with this natural grey. So both these yarns are Pyrenean yarns yet again. This is uh, Tarasconez which comes from the Filature de Nure or Cibas de Laine, uh, which is the nearest um, spinning mill to me. So it's about a two and a half hour drive from where I live. Um, and the Tarasconez is the sheep, the Pyrenean sheep breed um, that is native to that part of the world. And then the yellow, uh, the weld was dyed on Barrageois, which is the sheep from the valley where I used to live, which is in the next valley along. Um, on a future podcast, I might try and find you some photos and or some film from my um, for when I've taken sheep pictures and show you um, the sheep that I'm talking about because I kind of more or less exclusively work with local to me yarn uh, breed yarns and um, I. Uh, yeah, you, you're not necessarily um, familiar with them because they're French local breeds. But anyway, so I've combined the two and I've started knitting a pair of socks. <laughs> so this is the first sock. Uh, it's a DK weight sock and this is for my little boy. 
so I've given him some contrast heel and some striping in the cuffs and I I was originally going to just knit grey socks but he is not a massive fan of grey and the, the problem I find as well um, when I do single colour socks is it's hard to find the pairs and I'm intending to knit him quite a few pairs of socks over the coming months so I thought ah let's get out my natural dyed yarn in colours that I sort of find a little bit too intense uh, and vivid and they're perfect for a little boy. So this is a sock um, from a pattern by Peyton's, it's a free pattern on Ravelry that goes from age two to adult size I think or at least medium size woman sock um, and they do also have a baby pattern which I've used a lot in the past but I don't know if it's available anymore. Um, there used to be a linked one, I have to have a look. But so anyway, um, it's a really easy pattern. I've kind of, um, I just use it to have the numbers for the sizing um, and I've actually ended up, they, they've probably a bit bigger than I, um, than I was expecting. I think I've made them size six to eight because my son's got quite big feet for a five year old. But he tried this on yesterday and it stayed on fine. So I'll make the, the other sock the same and then I might just go down a size for the next pair for him um but i'm knitting these as part of the knitting at home sock knit along i think it's called which is organized by dear ruth of rain cloud and sage and the cast on was on monday and by <laughs> tuesday evening i think i had finished the first sock um because we've been spending more time indoors um the last few days because of the weather and i've found it really relaxing to sit by the fire and knit on socks whilst um the children are playing so i'm really pleased to get started and i think that this is also going to count as the bottoms for the set that i'm going to make for my son as part of the magic three mile which i was talking about last time which is um going to be starting in may first of may i think so next week um i did talk to mimi about it because my two children are both born in june and i'd really like them to both have a set for their birthdays so she said it was okay to get started soon uh to get started beforehand and um yeah i i think i'll just have time to knit um one more sock which will be the pair for his bottoms um because we make a bottom something for the bottom something for the top uh and a toy <coughs> So yeah, I'm really, really excited um, to be back sock knitting again and working with DK on size 3.25 needles um, it knits up really quickly. So. Talking of socks and going back to the handspun, I've got a pair of socks to show you that I finished um, back in... February I think. So if you go back to the start of my podcast um, I shared with you a basket of happiness which was a basket of hand spun um, yarns that I had spun last year on my spindle and my wheel and one amongst those yarns were four was a sort of a gradient set of six um, six uh, little mini skeins ranging from dark brown through grey to white which were spun from Corridale Top which I believe came from World, World of Wool and I turned them into a pair of bed socks so again it's turning out a little bit bright so these were this was fingering weight uh, two ply worsted spun. So this was my first attempt at, uh, oh, I'll start from the bottom, from worsted. And I sort of did a fade, I've never done a fade before, I had to kind of work it out and it took a few attempts to get it right. Um, the heel is just the grey, the bottom toe is just the brown and the white, uh, the cuff is just the white. And I think I did a twisted rib on the top, but in between I've done a gradient. And I wanted to do the bottom to be dark because I thought that's going to get the most dirty. So I knitted them together, not two at a time, but sort of did the cuff on one and then did the cuff on the other, did the 
the leg and then did the other leg because um, I find that generally unless it's for children I, I just find it more pleasurable to knit um, knit my socks together it's how I've always knitted socks um, when I first learned to knit socks I think I was 15 it was my sister-in-law Danish sister-in-law who taught me and um, I always I had this thing where I would always knit with scrap yarn and I would have the same colours but I would combine them differently, I would do different types of stripes and I used to just love doing them together on two sets of needles and what, sort of playing with the differences of um, in the striping so I've kind of always done that. I don't really get second sock syndrome but um, yeah I just prefer to, to do them together so I'm really really chuffed with how these have come out. They're sort of again I think actually it was more of a sports weight because um, they're quite dense and quite heavy if I compare them to these that obviously they're smaller but um, this is woolen spun um, so I don't wear them in shoes I have worn them in welly boots but they tend to be more like bed sort of socks or kind of slipper socks for around the house so I'll be really interested to see how they wear because Coradelle is a very soft um, very soft wool and I probably um, you know they're probably you know it would be like making a pair of socks out of merino which I probably wouldn't do um, but I just fell in love with the with the colour because I had three I had this dark brown this grey and this white and I sort of did a combo spin for the marling um, and I, I just wanted to see how they turned out so um, yeah I'll be interested to see how they wear but so far I'm really really pleased with them and I'm actually just going to pop them on now because my feet are a bit cold. Last thing to show you is I have a new bear friend. <laughs> uh, I just couldn't help myself. I think it was Sunday evening or Saturday evening. Yes, yeah, Saturday. I just felt like making another little bear. Um, and I used the pattern uh, that I had been practice, uh, been working on for the little bear um, who I introduced you last week, to, to you last week, called Benny. And so this is Benny's brother, and his name is William. <laughs> and doesn't want to... There we go. This is William. And William, so he's made from the same pattern. Um, he's made from golden mohair. And he's got little felt paws, feet, and he's got... Oh, tummy full of wonderful Lourdes wool so just like his brother and his cousin Arthur and I'm rather pleased with how he's turned out he's brought a lot of happiness to our little family this week he's been sat on the shelf and he's a little bear who um, when all this is sort of calmed down and things are back to normal or as normal as they can be um, he will be in my shop so I'm intending on knitting him something before I send him out into the world. I might dive into my blanket um, yarns because I can, I can particularly see him looking quite fetching in some forest green. So I might make him a little pair of dungarees or trousers with braces. Um, but yes, so another little bear to keep me happy. Um, and I'm intending to make um, another couple. Uh, I have a special project for the month of May, which I'll perhaps talk about next time. Um, a bear project, um, which will be using blue mohair. But I'll talk to you about that next time. Um, so yeah, I want to wish you uh, a really good end to your week. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And... I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye-bye.